The following is an exclusive presentation of MTN, the official broadcast partner of the Big Sky Conference. From MTN Sports, this is Big Sky Conference football, Montana versus Weber State. Yes, indeed, a Big Sky Conference battle extraordinaire. Two nationally ranked teams doing battle here today. The 11th ranked Montana Grizzlies visiting Weaver State, ranked number five in the nation. Both teams in dire need of a victory after losing last weekend. Welcome inside Stewart Stadium on the campus of Weber State University. Look at the Big Sky Conference standings. Three teams still undefeated. And of course, the Weaver State Wildcats at 3 1, Montana at 2 2. I'm Jay Cohn with MTN Sports, joined by Grizzly Hall of Fame quarterback Marty Morningweg. Marty, we mentioned the importance of this game. You saw the standings. Both teams need a victory to put themselves in place for the FCS playoffs. Jay, what a game this should be. Two highly ranked teams in the country coming off of gut-wrenching losses. Let's see how both teams attack this adversity that has hit them in the face. And the Grizzlies might have to rebound without their top quarterback, Lucas Johnson. Here's a look at last week against Sac State, a game where he was knocked out on this crushing hit right here. Kaboom. That means that we might see Chris Brown, the redshirt freshman, in the starting slot. We did see uh, Lucas warm up, but we're not expecting him to play. It looked to me like they were getting a pregame workout with Lucas Johnson in this concussion protocol. So I would expect Chris Brown to lead the Grizzlies onto the field. And remember, Chris Brown's 3-1 and one as a starter at quarterback for the Grizzlies. Let's talk about Weber State. They're a great defensive team, and offensively, Coach Jay Hill says they love to be balanced. They love balance. They love keeping their opponent off balance by making it simple on their own team, but really confusing on their opponents. Let's see how the Grizzlies attack that type of philosophy. Grizzly replay kicks off with the first quarter right after this. Let's get things started with the first quarter on Grizzly Replay. It is a perfect day for football here at Ogden, Weber State University. The crowd still filing in or expecting, oh, maybe up to 10,000 fans here. Everyone, we can tell you that the Grizzly offense will be first up because Weber State is getting ready to kick off back deep as Malik Flowers. And the kick is off, and we're underway from Stewart Stadium. Malik Flowers hauls it in at the one. He has several blockers up in front. Malik, a loose on the sidelines, and gets up over the 30-yard line. He's the leading kick returner in UM history. Pistol right now. The give to running back Dante McMillan up the middle. He's hit right as he gets up to the 25, maybe a gain of two yards on the play with a single bat in the backfield. Drop straight back, looking to the right flat. Ooh, and nearly intercepted on the defense for the Grizz. Corbin Walker, he had, had a beat on that pass, Marty. Bronson Barron calls the signals. Let's see what the Grizzlies D has in store for him. And going deep, intended for number 31 over there. The Grizzlies. Robbie Houck on the defense. Yeah. Barron gets some pressure from well now and slips as he gets up near the 20 yard line so he avoided the sack. Alex Gubner again on the stop for the defense for the Grizzlies. Barron with a quick, quick slant over to the, the corner and it's complete. Nash Fouch in on the stop for the Grizz. Just will not quit. Barron back to pass, gets a pressure and he'll be sacked. And his helmet comes off. Junior Bergen in the Wildcat calling the signals. He sends Xavier Harris in motion. Now Junior runs up the middle and across the 45 down to the 41, maybe the 42 yard line. And it's close to the first down. To find a ways to run the football. Here they go another third down with a run. And Chris Brown keeps it and crosses the 40 and it has the yardage for the first down. The second first down of the game for the Grizz offense. Well, Junior Bergen did play quarterback for Billing Senior in high school. He has a gimp finger and he takes it on a run across the 35 down inside the 30 and knocked out of bounds, but not before he's close to first down yardage for Weber State. And the give 
is to Osmo up the middle, breaks a tackle across the 25. He's brought down there, but looks to have enough crossing the line to gain. And Keelan White, Brown looking, throwing deep into the end zone. That's White, had a hand on it, and no flags. As looks like it was cleanly played there by Maxwell Anderson, four of seven in the field goal department so far this season. Roberts is the holder, and the kick is up. And the kick is good, and the Grizzlies draw first blood here at Stewart Stadium. It's 3-0. Montana gets on the board first. A home for himself and his family by playing in Utah and coaching his whole career in the state of Utah. Very uncommon for a college football coach. They liked that play so well the first time. They went to the well a second time. Pat's going with a little uh, upbeat action here. Bronson. Out again to his tight end. Robbie Hauck in on the stop. He'll be very close right at the yard to gain. Yeah, they're giving it to him. It's a first and ten. Or throw the ball with numbers outside. Three straight passes for Malone and a sack for the Grizzlies. That looks like Braxton Hill. And the Grizzlies pick up their second sack of the game. Braxton Hill out of Anaconda, Montana. Bronson Barron out of American Fork, Utah, the quarterback. Getting some pressure, steps up. And throws it. It's complete. It looks like it could be sh a little short of uh, the yard to gain. Porter. McPherson again is the target as the Wildcats move the chains. And on first down, McPherson again with the tackle is Justin Ford. Bronson Barron, the quarterback, gives up and a wide open run. This is number 26, Damon Bankston, and he's going to take it to the house. A quick hitter up the middle off right tackle. And Damon Bankston, the 195-pound sophomore out of Katy, Texas, finds Pater. Third and five there, Jay. And the Wildcats, like the Grizzlies on third downs, have chosen to run the football. The Montana Grizzly defense were all about pass there and their pass rushing. And they pop just a simple dive to the house. And that'll bring us to the end of the first quarter. And it's been kind of slow going, but picking up steam. It's well, Wildcats from Weber State 7, the Grizzlies 3. That's their last Schwab scoreboard. We'll be right back here on the MTN Network. Get social with Grizzly fans and follow MTN Sports on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Now, here's the second quarter on Grizzly Replay. And there you see the Les Schwab scoreboard telling the tale of the first quarter. It's the Wildcats 7, the Grizzlies 3. Let's talk a little, Marty, about this Weber State defense, first in the nation in the red zone, and they are just so impressive. Joe Dale and Grant Duff, their co-defensive coordinators. Duff coaches the D-line. Dale coaches the safeties, and together they have built a heck of a defense. Jaden Dawson being called for the pass interference. The Grizzlies were also offsides on that, so it's first and ten for the Wildcats. Here's Bankston again on the run up the middle, and he gets maybe a two-yard gain. Stop made by Cale Edwards. Replay. Running play again up the middle one more time. That's Dante McMillan, the running back, the sophomore out of Seattle. Grizzly stop him for no gain. So it'll bring up third and long. Good field position. Big play here in the early going. Grizz brings some pressure. Roddy Hauk on the quarterback, and the sack is made as Hauk applies the pressure, but he got some help as well. Junior Bergen back deep for the Grizz, standing at the 35 yard line. Burgess with a good punt. Junior gets it and is hit immediately. And the ball comes loose, but recovered by the Grizz. Let's see if they said he was down or not. But he's got nine other fingers. He should be a okay. Let's see what Junior does. He wants to keep it. Now he heads out and he has some speed. Can he get outside? He crosses the 40, breaks a tackle out to, well, I think he got enough for the first down right at the 45 yard line. Good job for getting out of the backfield, out of that trouble. Grizzlies offense have it first and 10. Give up the middle to Nick Osmo, who breaks a tackle and gets inside Wildcats territory and flags fly. That might have been a face mask. Let's see. Second and nine. Ball at the 34-yard line. Brown looking across the middle and finds Roberts. 
He's open and down inside the 15-yard line. Mitch Roberts out of Missoula Sentinel High School. That's big for Mitch Roberts. Chris Brown gives it to Osmo up the middle, but there's no running room. Weaver State right on top of that. Nope. Zeke Birch, the defensive tackle, was not faked out at all. An empty backfield behind Brown. Drops back, looking for the corner route. He's got Mitch Roberts. That's, That's a pass that interference is. call in the end zone. There go the tight ends in motion for the Grizz. Chris Brown pitches back to Osmo, and he is stuffed right there. No running room at all for Weber State. Desmond Williams, one of the other captains from Corona, California. Osmo in the backfield. And Chris Brown will keep it. And he dives into the end zone. And that's a touchdown for the Montana Grizzlies. Chris Brown. Nice read option there, Marty. Yeah, a heck of a run. I tell you, the Wildcats had that thing sniffed out. They squeezed, right, which which then meant a line of scrimmage, which made Chris Brown pull it and then and then zero right there was in right there for the tackle and Chris Brown made a little high school move right there to get into the end zone. And here's Bronson Barron, the quarterback for the Wildcats. Hands off to McMillan who goes over the 40 yard line. Gain of a couple yards, but not much running room. The rest of the fellows to come in and make the tackle. Fast moving game already third down Bronson. Throwing it deep, Justin Ford on the defense for the Grizz. It hit him in the back, and the flags fly. With Bankston behind him, and Bankston faked the run. This is Malone, the tight end again, and he jumps out of bounds and avoids the tackle. Has enough for the first down. Jumps out of bounds at the 29-yard line. Second is short. The give is to Bankston, I believe. And he crosses the 20 and has enough for the first down. In the backfield alongside Bronson Barron. The give is to Banks. And he breaks a tackle in his Jana Carr with a touchdown saving tackle there for the Grizz. Let's see if the Grizzlies can take advantage of these Wildcat mistakes. Bronson Barron gives it up the middle. And he'll be stopped short. Perfect. Kick is up. And the kick is good. It was sailing a little bit to the right, but it goes through. So Kyle Thompson ties the game here for the Wildcats. Brings us up to halftime and with the score on the Brett's RV scoreboard. It's the Grizzlies 10, the Wildcats 10 at the half. Take coverage of the Grizz with you. Download our app for your favorite mobile device today. Time for the third quarter on Grizzly Replay. Welcome back, fans. Look at the scene here along the Wasatch Front in Ogden, Utah. Beautiful day for football. We're all tied at 10 apiece. Wildcats and the Grizzlies. In motion. Oh, Brown lost the snap. And he's back at the two-yard line. Looked like he anticipated that fly sweep coming by and didn't quite put the ball away. Braden Wilson, the defensive end with the stop, but Brown kind of went down just to make sure he had the ball of the second half. Barron has it picked off by Justin Ford, intended for McPherson. Nick, and Ford's a loose on the 50, across the 40, breaks outside at the 30, still on his feet and down to the 25 yard line. That pass intended for McPherson. Ford dropped right into the passing lane. It just surprises me that the Wildcats continue to throw the ball at Ford. He's too skilled. The Wildcats have so much other things they can do besides throw the ball to Ford. Good look at it there in the Brett's RV replay. Justin Ford showing not only can he intercept, but he can do some running himself. Nick Osmo in the backfield now. Along with some of the tight ends and a pitch back to Osmo who gets the first down and out of bounds at the 18 yard line. Weber State went for that fake pitch by Chris Brown. So here is Nick Ramos with perhaps a 32 yard field goal. Mitch Roberts is your holder. Kick is partially blocked and it skips over the crossbar and it's good. 
Pankston in the backfield. Gets the call, crosses the 30, down there after a short gain, maybe a three to four yard gain, tackle by Robbie Houck. The Grizz gains and blitzes and stunts. Here's Barron, keeps the ball uh -oh. and throws it to a wide open Ty McPherson and he's gonna go the whole way untouched. You saw it, Marty, blown coverage and McPherson takes it to the house. That's a Wildcat touchdown. Well, they've run that play several times. It's an RPO, and they typically throw it to the tight end. So the Grizz defense just completely overreacted when Bronson pumped to the flat. Final minutes of the third quarter. Weber State trying to get this running game going, and the Banks on the county. Bankston on the carry that time. Tackled by Marcus Wellnell. They get a field goal out of this important drive. They're up by seven. Bronson looking deep. There's going to be a wide receiver. Oh, nice play made by. So I, I think that's a good no call. Running play here. And the Grizzlies defense has it snuffed out right across the 50 on that third and long. So third and long, they're running it, Marty. They've had success running it on third down, but that one didn't work. Weber State leads it by four, 17 to 13. As the teams huddle up on the sideline, it's all about who can come to play in the fourth quarter. It's been a great slugfest here from Stewart Stadium. Thanks so much for joining us. You're watching Big Sky Conference Football on MTN. There's more coverage of the Grizzlies online anytime at montanasports.com. Get ready for the fourth quarter on Bobcat Replay. It's a beautiful day here in Ogden, Utah. The Weber State Wildcats, look at this, outscored their opponents 51 to seven in the fourth quarter this season under head coach Jay Hill. You see him there in his ninth season now here at Weber State. What a job he has done. Let's see if they throw it at him again. Nope. They're gonna run it. This is McMillan, and he breaks into the open and gets the first down, and then some across the 20, down to the, maybe the 19-yard line. And here they go with a tempo first and 10. That was a huge play for McMillan and the Wildcats offense. McMillan on the run again, this time down to the 15. So this is going to be huge for the Grizzly defense, Marty, to try to hold him to a field goal at the very least for Bronson Barron and the Wildcat offense. They give to Jackson up the middle, and he'll be down close to the 10-yard line. They're marking him back to the 12. So third and three, big play. Bronson Barron with the give to Chris. No, he doesn't. He's going to pass it to the number 86 for the score. Jay, that was the same oh, RPO. 96, Hayden Meacham, the tight end. Sorry, Leighton, Utah. The pump fake. The Grizz, like five minutes, 56 seconds left. They're down by 11. So they got to score a touchdown, two point, and a field goal to tie. Here's Malik right. Flowers. He's going to run it out of the end zone. Has some blockers ahead of him. And he's still on his feet. He's and he's gone. loose at the 30. He's the gone. 40, midfield. He's it's gone. just what Montana needed. He's going the length of the field. A 100-yard kickoff return for Malik Flowers. And you can see why he's the leading Grizzly kickoff return player in history. Wow. Like, right now. Yeah, a little creativity, Jay. We saw him practicing this both Thursday and Friday. I suspect it was a plus five red zone play and a two point play where they could use it in either situation. Executed just beautifully. Braxton Hill finished off McMillan. So here's Bronson Barron. They're going to try the run again. And he squirted in over the yard to gain. Ooh. That was a nice nifty move. Dante McMillan gets the yards and the chains moving. Here's the real give this time to Chris Jackson and he breaks the tackle and almost has first down yardage out to the 44. Tight end goes shifts up to the left hand side of the line. Barron's going to give to Jackson who breaks out into the open. We need a tackle. Looks like Justin Ford perhaps. Nash Fausch. Fourth and one. Give us up the middle and almost busting it is Chris Jackson who gets the first down over the 
35 yard line. And the Wildcats take a knee and the final 30 seconds will tick off here at Stewart Stadium. Jay Hill and the Weber State Wildcats improved to 7-1 on the year, 4-1 in conference. Coach Hill picks up his 65th victory and continues to add to his totals as the winningest coach in Weber State history. All right, thank you, Marty. As the victory bell rings here at Stewart Stadium for the Weber State Wildcats, it's time to say goodbye for my partners, Marty Morningwick, the great coach, Kyle Hansen down on the sidelines, our point man in the booth, John Stepanek, and our entire MTN crew. I'm Jay Cohn. Thanks so much for watching today. From Ogden, Utah, the final score, Weber State 24, Montana 21. Now keep in mind, our next broadcast next week, Saturday, when the Grizzlies head home to take on Cal Poly under the lights at Washington Grizzlies. Have a great night, everybody. Thanks for joining us.